So now that our Node application can successfully talk to our MongoDB instance, I think it's time we started to build out a demo CRUD application. And I was trying to think of what would be the best example project, and I and I realized that uh, you know searching through YouTube, I could not find a single a tutorial that covered how to build a to do application. So that's exactly what we're going to build. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, I would never build the most annoying application. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the second most annoying application, which is a blog application. So let's get started. Um, now, keep in mind, uh, when we start building out the express side of things, I'm going to move a little bit quickly uh, just because I want to make sure this video focuses more on the Docker side of things. I'm going to expect you guys to have a little bit of background when it comes to um, express already. So I'll move quickly. Uh, if you have trouble keeping up, you know, I would recommend watching another tutorial on how Express works and then coming back to this. Um, but I want to make sure that anybody watching this, whether they're interested in Express or Node, um, that they can follow along because the idea behind all of this is uh, all about the Docker side of things and how we can build a development to production workflow. So let's start off by creating a couple of folders. So the first folder we need is one for our models. It's going to store our Mongoose models. Uh, we'll create a new folder for our controllers as well. And we'll create a new folder for our routes. And so let's start off by building our models. And I'm going to create a new file, and we'll call this um, our post model. So this is a blog application, so we need something to represent our blog posts. And from here, we want to import Mongoose. And we'll do const post schema. And here, let's think about the properties we want to give it. So it's got to have a title. And we'll say this is going to be a type of string. And then we're going to say this is required. And we'll set that to be true. And if they don't include a title, we'll say we'll throw an error and say post must have title. Uh, the next, next property you should have would be a body. So this is going to be the content of the post. So once again, this is going to be a type of string. And we'll say required as well. And we'll say uh, post must, uh, oops, must have body. All right, so this is going to be our blog model. Fairly straightforward. Uh, and then here, let's just make sure we export it. And now let's create our uh, controllers uh, so that we can handle creating, reading, uh, updating, and deleting our posts. We'll call this post controller. And so first thing we want to do is we want to import our post model so that we can actually, uh, you know, interact with our database and create posts. And then we'll do export, and then we'll define our uh, controller for retrieving all posts. So we'll do get all posts. And this is going to have a request, response, and next as well, although that's optional for a route. All right, and the way to retrieve all posts with Mongoose is we can just say uh, const posts equals post dot find. So that's going to connect to our database and retrieve all of our posts based off of this model. However, there's a couple of things we have to do. First of all, this is um, an asynchronous method. So we have to do async await. Sorry, that should be await. And then this function needs to be an asynchronous function. And then uh, anytime you're working with anything that could potentially error out, we need to throw it in a try catch block. So we'll do try And I'm just going to move this into the try statement. And if it's successful, we want to make sure that we send a response. And we'll say status 200. 
And here we'll say, first of all, status of success. And we'll say results. Actually, we'll do data. And we'll just pass in posts. And then also, uh, anytime we return an array of any kind, I usually like to include a results count. So we'll say uh, posts.length. So however many posts we retrieve, we also return that as well. And then if there's an error, let's just send a status uh, 400. I probably not the correct error code, but remember this: the point of this video is not about the express side of things. I just need to get something up and running just to show you guys how all of this integrates together. And we'll say status, fail, and that's all. All right, so we've got the logic for retrieving all posts. Uh, let's get the logic for um, uh, retrieving an individual post. This is also going to be an asynchronous method. They're all going to be asynchronous. And I'm going to just copy and paste this, and we're going to just change a few things. But for the most part, all of this is going to be fairly similar. And then here, the only thing that we have to change is post.find by ID. And then we need rec.params.id. So uh, you know, when you're retrieving a post, what we're going to do is we're going to have the user go to uh, localhost, you know, colon 3000 or whatever, uh, and then say, you know, API uh, v1. I'll skip that for now. And we'll say they want to go under the posts. And then here they would pass in uh, whatever ID. So if they want the post with an ID of five, they would pass that. And to retrieve that value, we just do rec.params.id. And, you know, within our route, we're actually going to just do colon ID so that we can pass whatever value. Uh, the request is uh, into the params.id. So we retrieve that. We don't need the results because it's not going to be an array. And uh, don't have to do this, but we're going to only return an individual post. So we'll just say post. And that should be all. So then the next thing we want to do is for creating a post. And actually, Instead of writing this out, let's just copy this exactly. And we'll call this create post. And then we'll remove this. And we'll just say post.create. And we want to just pass in rec.body. So uh, the title and the body that the, that the front end sends, it's going to be attached to our body property. So that should be all that we need. Uh, we can return the same stuff. All of that looks good. All of that looks good. And then we just need two more. Uh, we need update and delete. And we're going to copy the get one for the update. So this will be update post. And the method we're going to use is find by ID and update. And so first of all, we have to get, um, we have to pass in what the ID is. So just like we did for uh, get one post, we can just pass in rec.params.id. And then we have to pass in the body. So rec.body, which is going to have the content of our post. And then a couple of other things um, that are optional. So I forget what these do. Um, just pass it in. Uh, I know run validators is going to ensure that even when you update, it's going to um, it's going to make sure that, you know, like we go back to the models, even when we update, it's going to check to make sure that we have a title, uh, as well as a body as well. So it's just going to do all of the, uh, mongoose schema validation, even on an update, which it doesn't do by default. And I believe this is to return the new post that gets created, but I could be wrong. And then lastly, we want to do our delete. So let's just copy this. And we'll change this to delete post. And all we have to do is let's delete all of this.
and we're going to call find by ID and delete. And we just pass in rec.params.id. And in this case, there's no data, so we can just pass in null or just not even include that actually. All right, so we've got all of our CRUD methods done. Our controllers are set. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is just define our routes. So let's go into our routes and let's create a file called uh, post routes. .js. And in here we want to import express. And let's import our post controller as well. And let's create a new router. All right, and then let's start defining our routes. So we do router dot route and then the specific URL. So this is just going to be uh, the slash URL, the slash path. And then now we can chain in what we want for our get method and then what we want for our um, our post method as well. So get and post, remember, they're always going to be, uh, if we actually take a look at the URL, it's going to be, you know, localhost 3000. And then you know, if you go to slash get, then it's going to call this specific route. And if you go to slash post, it's going to create a new, uh, a new post. So that's how that's going to work. So let's uh, add the controllers into here. So the get method is going to call the, um, the post controller, uh, get all posts. So post controller dot get all posts. And then for the post method, this is going to create a post. So we'll do post controller dot create post. Then let's go to our router instance again and do route. And then here, the route's going to be actually slash colon ID. And so anytime you pass the ID, you're usually going to do a either an update or a delete. Or a get one post or an individual post. So here we'll do get. And then we'll pass in our post controller dot uh, get one post. All right, and then we'll also do a... Um, dot update no sorry not update patch and we'll call post controller dot update post and then we also want a delete which is going to be post controller dot delete and then we'll do module dot exports equals router and now let's go back to our index.js file and let's uh, wire that router up. So here we'll call it uh, post router, which equals require, and then our path to routes, and then post routes. And then uh, right under here, we'll say uh, app.use. And then we want to pass in the URL. So here uh, we can say slash posts and then post router. So what is this? What's actually, what's actually happening here? So uh, basically, if someone sends a request uh, and it has, uh, and it looks like, uh, you know, localhost colon 3000 slash posts. So if that first keyword after 3000 uh, is posts, it's going to send it to our post router. And then that's going to go to here. So this is where our post router is defined. And so it's going to strip off that posts now. And then we're just going to be left with either uh, colon 3000 slash or colon 3000 slash ID. So then it's going to match one of these. So that's all I'm trying to do. However, I usually like to do uh, slash API slash V1. So here you pass an API so that uh, you know that this request is for your API in case you're hosting your front end and your back end uh, within the same domain. 
And then I like to specify the version of our API. So this way, at least it keeps your different versions independent. So you can start a second version and they can run side by side. And so now basically if there's a request to API v1 slash posts, it's going to go to our post router. And let's save everything. Uh, so it looks like nothing's broken, but let's test this out. I'm going to bring up Postman. And let's just say API slash v1 slash posts. And let's do a send. And look at that. So it looks like things are working. So we can see it's a success. We got no results because we haven't created anything. Uh, so that works. Let's now try to create an entry. So we'll do post. And then go into our body. And then let's do uh, raw and then JSON. And then here, let's change this. So we need a title. I'll call this my first post. And then we need a body. And we'll say, uh, I don't know, body of first post, whatever. Let's send. And it looks like we got an error. So let's see what happened. Uh, now we went to post routes um, and under, uh, actually let's go to our controller where we create a post. And then here, let's just do a console.log E so that we can see exactly what's happening. And it says, oh, post must have a body. It does have a body. And I realized I know exactly what happened. So um, to actually attach the body of a request onto our re request, well, actually, I worded that weird, um, but for Express to actually take the body of the actual request and attach it to that request object that our controllers have access to, we actually have to pass in a middleware. So let's define that middleware real quick uh, under our index.js. Right here. We'll just say app.useExpress.json. So that's going to ensure that the body gets attached to the request object. And now if I hit send, we can see that it successfully created the post. We got the ID back from Mongoose, so that worked. If I go back to the get and then get all of our posts, we should see that show up. Perfect. Uh, let's update now. Let's update that post. So I'm going to do slash, and then we got to copy the ID of this post. And I'm going to change this to my first post updated. Let's hit send. And we can see that the title got changed to updated. And if I do a get and remove that ID, my first post updated. So we've successfully updated a post. Uh, let's try to get an individual post. So let's send that. We got the individual post. And then let's delete that post as well. Let's delete it. Success. We do a get now, nothing, perfect. Uh, let's just add a few entries just so that we can have something in our database. So I'm gonna go to post, let's just create a couple. So got one and change this to second post, third post. And then let's go back to our get method right here and let's send and we should get three entries. Perfect. So now we've got a basic CRUD application. And I think that's a good stopping point for this section.